Right, so from the kind of top-down uh, view, I suppose, to the bottom-up view, uh, because our next speaker is Katarina Miller, um, who is the founder of 3C Compliance. So uh, she's been dealing with companies who are going, help, uh, how do we deal with this? Um, which is a very, very useful perspective to have now. Uh, Katarina is also the president of the European Women Lawyers Associ uh, Organization, sorry. Um, association? <laughs> sorry. Um, and uh, over to her. So I, I'm very happy to be here. I also want to repeat the thank you to Wired for having me here. Yeah, data protection challenges for companies within the European Union and worldwide, and I might also want to add for consumers or for human beings in general. And uh, first of all, I wanted uh, to present you some surveys, some numbers. But in fact, I'm, I'm more interested in who of you is from the European Union? My, my trace. Okay. Who of you is not from the European <coughs> Union? Okay. So, who of you is from Spain? Okay. Oh yes, I was I was looking for you. <laughs> and who who is from from Switzerland? Okay. And is there somebody from Israel? You, you that, were you not from? No, nobody. Okay. So you will you will see later why I'm asking these questions. Um, interestingly, a uh, Spanish company which is called uh, NetApp Iberica last year found out in a survey that uh, according to their survey 70 70 percent of european companies are not prepared for gdpr that sounds uh, horrible it's loud as it that sounds like a very terrific uh, situation another survey i found uh, was a survey from mckinsey last year as well they were um, asking several executives worldwide if they feel prepared for, in general, for data protection. And uh, the answer is that one third of these executives didn't feel prepared for data protection on a long run. So they also felt the need to, yeah, to do something. Um, this is a problem I find uh, in Spain. Many companies uh, think they have to do something, but most of these companies don't really know what to do. I want to, to give you some examples. Um, just this morning, while taking my first coffee, I read uh, the newspaper, in the newspapers in El País uh, that there was a, a new study done. I mean, people just nowadays tend to love to do studies um, about what is the best company, Spanish company in treating uh, data? Data. So the surprises. Uh, any guess here? A, a Spanish company you know and you think uh, which is treating very well? Oh wow! Well done. Did you read the survey? No. No. <laughs> Good guess. I uh, sorry. I don't have something to to give you, but <laughs> chapeau. <laughs> exactly. It's Telefonica. And you want to have another guess? Why do you think it's Telefonica? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So I, I found out this morning. So according to the survey, and I have it here because I, I didn't have time to remember it. Sorry to memorize it. Uh, they have um, the best uh, politics of uh, data protection. Uh, they just for, they get uh, one, two, three, four stars out of five. Uh, they they are compliant, fully compliant uh, with the, with the law, with the Spanish law. Uh, they don't notify the consumer, which I don't think is very good. In this point is Fotocasa, who won the, the prize. And then again, coming back to, to transparency, you earlier you mentioned transparency. In transparency uh, issue, they also won the two stars out of twos. And also about uh, promotion of the pr uh, privacy of the consumers. They are getting one and a half stars out of two. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm quite surprised about this because I am on the panel of responsible business of Telefonica, so I advise them. Uh, they know what 
I think about them, that's why I can tell you openly that I'm surprised because last year <laughs> we had uh, the topic uh, data trust on our panel and I can assure you that GDPR was not on the topic, that none of us, we are 50 members of the panel, asked questions about uh, the GDPR, it was not mentioned, it was more about yeah, the trust. Uh, another issue I wanted to tell you, which I find very interesting, who of you has got a shredder at home? Please raise your hands, a shredder. So the rest you don't have a shredder at home. So you might be surprised that 57% of Spaniards have an uh, own shredder at home and 61% uh, out of these 57 bought their own shredder last year. Why I'm telling you this? I'm telling you this because we are realizing that the consumer, the end consumer, is taking very seriously the aspect of data protection. They tend to use this data shredder in order to, um, yeah, to shred uh, sensible data like uh, the, bank, uh, the bank notification and so on and so forth. Um, yes. I was told, I am also a member of the Institute of um, Board Members in Spain. We, there are many, uh, many companies represented, from small size companies and also the, the big corporations. And all of them, and last Monday we had a meeting and we were discussing data. And all of them, we had one thing in common. We didn't know what to do with GDPR. We don't feel prepared, we don't know what to do. And one, of, uh, one owner, founder and owner of a medium-sized company told me, Katarina, I think the biggest problem is that we don't know what to do with the data we already have of consumers and that I think that after the entrance in, in, into force in May, that I'm not allowed to have. So she's worried that she has got data that she's not allowed to have. So I think um, there's still a long way uh, to, to go in order to really explain the companies what GDPR is, what companies have to do. And I also uh, feel like it's, it's feeling like a myth that all the companies think that this ends on the 28th of May. This is my own feeling. That everybody is running now, running, running or not, or not doing anything. Because they think that on the 28th of, March, uh, of May something is happening and then don't really know what. Also, the other aspect, because I'm here with two hats, the one is as the lawyer consultant, the other one as the president of EULA, European Women Lawyers Association. Um, interestingly, we were asked by the Bulgarian um, Data Protection Authority if we want to work together with them as EULA uh, in order to develop a program for small and medium-sized companies within European Union. Why did they ask us? Because they thought it would be important and interesting to have women within this process. Of course, I like this uh, very much. Um, please don't ask me, as uh, Ms. Merkel was asked last year in April, if she's a feminist. I think this is not the point about this. But I would like to quote Mary Bird in at her new book, Women in Power where she was, uh, yeah, where she described that she was treated badly in Twitter. And I think we really also have to protect uh, women and children within this whole data protection issue. Um, the next point I would like to talk with you about is best practices. Because after the horrific and yeah, horrific, um, numbers, 70% of companies that don't feel prepared. I would like to talk with you about best practices. Do we have best practices to see how a data protection could work or how could we inform and train each other? And I, for example, really like Elizabeth Denham, the data commissioner of UK. I think she's doing, um, she's really living in challenging times uh, living with Brexit and GDPR. So I really also chapeau, <laughs> I think she's doing a good job. What she's doing, she's trying to explain uh, what, what uh, GDPR is and she's also trying to uh, take out the myth of GDPR. For example, 
that GDPR is not a way to pay Millennium back. Um, I also would like to mention the Spanish data uh, agency uh, because they, are, they have developed a tool for small and medium sized um, companies in order to help them to get ready for the 28th of May. I've tried it myself, it's, it's really very, very simple, but I think it's the only agency within, 28, within the 28 uh, European member states that made the effort to prepare in order to prepare something. Um, in, the B, in the BBC, or according to the BBC, Israel, Finland and Switzerland are the worldwide best countries in relation with data protection. Interesting. That's why maybe why Wire has its headquarters in Switzerland, right? Okay, so I, I thought so. Thank you. <laughs> I was I I tried, uh, I tried to to get in touch with colleagues from Israel, Finland, Switzerland in order to ask why do you think this is the case? Unfortunately, they haven't answered me. I can only, I can I could think that the sanctions are quite high in these countries, and maybe also the consumers in general are very much aware of of the importance of data protection. Um, what are the the challenges that we face when we talk about uh, data protection? Well, on the on the first. Hand on the first, yeah, hand um, talking with companies, and now I'm talking again as a lawyer, I'm a company lawyer. Of course, are uh, yeah, the feeling not to know what to do now as a business owner. Who of you is business owner? Okay. So uh, I think the challenge is really in order to um, yeah, kind of understanding how what, what do we have to do in order to get prepared. And also this fear of, of these high sanctions you mentioned before. I am of the opinion that without sanctions, nothing works. We can see that, <laughs> I can see this again as the president of the European Women Lawyers Association with EU gender equality law, there nothing moves without sanctions, so sanctions are necessary. And uh, the enforcement just works better with sanctions. On the other hand, I'm also very optimistic and I really share your opinion and I agree with you that GDPR is a great chance for all of us and also for our businesses because um, GDPR compliance can actually boost digital business within the European Union. Why? Because I think on the one hand we can now do this job of having a look at what data do we actually have do we need all the data that we have? So it's like of a catharsis that we can do within our own company. Uh, I think also it's easier for our companies in order to get, um, yeah, to work outside our, our member states because of the harmonization. Um, I also think that the GDPR can be a catalyst for the for taking necessary steps to build strong. Uh, digital uh, capabilities in order, for example, to get data management systems for our clients. So it can also be, uh, yeah, bring opportunities for us. Um, I think to make a summary, um, the GDPR is won't have finished on the 20th, 28th of May. I think there's still a long way to go. I think what we need is a lot of uh, training, training and training as another corporate compliance aspects. I think that's very normal and I think we should just all try to make this effort and I think it's worth it. Thank you very much. <laughs>